I guess let's say mystery Is it? solved. Because I thought you were supposed to be investigating the lynching, not my employer conduct. <laughs> uh, this just gets on my nerves. I'm a feminist. I guess I like to be thorough. Everything has something to do with everything. I don't know. I just went for it. You're right. I probably shouldn't have asked. Uh, no, let's go if everything has something to do with everything. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Revishal. That's right, we're back in Disco Elysium. If you haven't checked out the first episode, go back and check that out. We learned quite a bit about ourselves. We're about to head on downstairs and see what's going on. Let's get our unknown guy walking down there. So, okay, we got a guy over here, a lady in a wheelchair. Um, ooh, I like the music. And it looks like, ooh, we got a stage to our, our right. Let's go check that stage out before we head over that way as we get that big old stretch in. Very nice. So, in that first episode, we uh, woke up drunk as a skunk on the ground in our hotel room. Uh, looks like we got a big old mic that's just waiting for someone to sing into it. Uh, we might be a cop, we might not be. Uh, we're finding out. We met a nice lady outside our door. Uh, I, she implied that we're a cop, uh, but we've been drinking the last couple days. We're here to to look at a, a body that's out back, I think. Uh, the speakers connect to the radio and the music is... I didn't she catch all that. In karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Ooh, an oceanic soul. Uh, it is immense. It's modest, puny, cubic, is obscured by the hangover. Because uh, we are a superstar, it is I immense. Do. And it needs to be heard through a PA system. As one does. By other people. <laughs> By other people, indeed. All right. Uh, this goes well for the a theory. I'm a developing down on my luck superstar person. Heck yeah. He was mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline. <laughs> yes. Sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. What should I See sing? It works. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found thought it was obvious yeah of course serves them right wipe that smirk off their face with your sad tragic small church song who's laughing now no one <laughs> you would need another copy of the tape first though the one upstairs is destroyed all right so we got ourselves another quest to find a, a copy of that tape it's like we got a fellow standing oh we got As an idea turn, a bright light catches your eye making you squint where is it coming from, from? A distant sunset a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Exactly, we're here to solve shit. Actually, now that I hear superstar and law official in a sentence, they sound weird together. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. <laughs> Salam Rocky Bayi. Badass on the edge disco cop. On the Time edge disco cop. I like it. Fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you, and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. Indeed, it is. We're definitely going to be leaning into the uh, the superstar. Uh, we lost two logic. Oof, that's not good. Uh, um, let's see. First, let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar. And the groupies in cocaine riddled with hepatitis C strikes a lioness pose with a mic kind of way. You're not uh, Guillemin Le Million or Davy Dewey or Dewis. No, you're a metaphorical superstar. I love it. Medical for metaphorical superstar. You bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it. Where some would say it doesn't belong in law enforcement. So we can internalize it. Okay, so we're gonna start, I guess, researching that. We'll let that run for a few seconds and we'll have to come back and check that out. Let's head on over to our journal. So our, our task is to sing karaoke. We need to find a sufficient tragic tape, then play it on a boombox to memorize the lyrics, then ask the cafeteria manager to perform, preferably in the evening, more people are in the bar. Man, I'm having a good old laugh here. Okay, so uh, map, we've got two from the mirror. I, I guess we don't know exactly what that is. 
Um, okay, let's go ahead and back out of this. 843 is still here on day one. Let's talk to this fellow here, see what he has to say. This Lake Twintis stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Oh, probably because we've been drinking the last couple days, he has wants nothing to do with us. Everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Make some small talk. Uh, we're going to look at that a stuffed bird. work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Oh, did we break it? Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola. The part of the world you are in right now. Huh. The small steel tag says as much. The great skewer. Stercoarius skewer. Well, let's uh, let's uh, show him our impressive knowledge. I mean, what happened? I'm assuming we ripped it off. We probably definitely can't help. Uh, let's go with Look, that. Your buddy is over there. He looks at the door where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Okay, so that guy in the orange jacket, that's where we're heading. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? Uh, I don't want to be a jerk. Uh, what do you mean by my buddy? He pretends not to hear you. Concentrating on the bird instead. Okay, let's. I mean, we're a cop, maybe, or a superstar. Let's ask no, him if he's a bartender. I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. Okay, someone's a little snippy. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. Uh, okay, we'll be uh -huh. nice. Uh, and then we're just gonna keep on walking, and we'll we'll see what everything has to offer here. Uh, the menu has been wiped clean. Only the words Monday is written on it. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts with a man's handwriting. Ooh. All right. There is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. I like these little uh, details. Uh, the soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. All right. Let's click on this door here. The door is bolted. A sign reads kitchen reserved for personnel until 1300. Uh, all right. Can we interact with this here? Inside, you catch a glimpse of Union paraphernalia, a strike poster, and some Wren pennants. Let's see if we can get through this door. Uh, sign reads, Mess Hall reserved for Union members. Doors open at 1600. Uh, we can look at whatever. Is this a pinball machine? This Royal Pinball Machine is unplugged. All right, we'll talk with the lady in the wheelchair, and then we'll talk with our buddy down here in the orange bomber jacket. Oh, our jackets oh, have the sweet. same markings on the back. Uh, okay, Lena, the cryptozoologist's wife's wife. Oh. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. Oh, I want to talk to you, though. Okay, fine. We'll go talk to our friend here. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Aw, how nice of him. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same okay. enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Okay, so I think we're going to go superstar, but not like jerk superstar. So of course we're going to shake his hand. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. Kitsuragi. Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. Um, realize he's waiting for your name. <laughs> okay, so we can either uh, be honest, just be a jerk, or uh, can we, should we invent a name for ourselves? <laughs> Partial to the officer. Um, man, let's uh, well, let's say nothing and let's see if he says our name. It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday, Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? I mean, technically, yes. What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. AKA drunk as a skunk. Um, you're taking me for someone else. No, uh, yeah, we just talked to if him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Not that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? Mm, maybe, I think that's what the it gal upstairs said. to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? <laughs> yes, I'm aware I'm a policeman. Uh, yes, I have. Ah, uh, man. Um, 
Let's go if I haven't again. We're gonna be we'll be superstar, but not a jerk lying superstar. Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Okay. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Uh again, we're not gonna lie. So the body is still in the tree. It it is. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Uh how can you be so sure I'm from the police? But I can't remember anything. What are we supposed to be doing again? All right, well, let's just, um, let's go fast. I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. Okay, so that's what those white squares must be. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. <laughs> Inspectorate General means internal affairs. What he's saying is he's not from the rat squad and isn't supposed to suspect such things. Uh, yeah, we'll just go for internal yes, affairs. I'm, not them. I'm from criminal investigation. These white rectangles mean point to your sleeves. Yes. But they're just white they're rectangles. Not just white rectangles. <laughs> they bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. Ah, that's cool. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. You mean you don't have a badge? <laughs> I do not have a badge. Um, it was not on me when I woke up. Pretend if I have it in my badge. I'm a policeman. I have my badge. No, we're Losing just... Using your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle mm. has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. I agree with that. Um, let's go. I mean, if we're being honest, let's um, let's go with. I can't remember anything. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. Oh dang! Okay. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said. The dead body should be our number one concern. I agree with that. Okay. Um, see, this could go a couple different ways. Like, he could be like, haha, impersonating syndrome or, you know, imposter syndrome. Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and say we this. I feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. Dang, okay. Kim, coming out but hard. First, we have to take it down. Okay, let's just uh, let's ask Talk what we're to supposed manager. to do. Then we go out back and take the body down. All right, that sounds like a plan. Let's go ahead and... You, officer. Eh, barely an officer. All right, so let's head over here and talk to... What was his name? Garrett? Talk to Garrett over here. We're back, my friend. Hola. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart. Gart. Right. Okay, close. Uh, you run yeah. this place. And glances in his little notebook. Yes. Okay. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Precinct 51. <laughs> still doesn't know my name. Uh, the harbinger of ruin. I'm currently in between names. Uh, uh, or say nothing. Uh, let's hmm. let's just be quiet. Or do we... Ah, you know what? No, no. <laughs> We're gonna, uh, but I don't want to be a jerk. Okay, let's go say nothing. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Ooh, interesting. Why is Sylvie not here? She's suspect number one. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay, so now we got someone to call. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. Oh, well, thank you, Reaction Speed. I um, didn't know that's what a phone number was for. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? I guess we're just going to stand here and be quiet. Kim's going to ask what, all the questions. Oh, Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. 
Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. <laughs> I didn't imply that. Detective. Uh, yeah. I have everything. You? Yeah, we can ask some questions. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police yes. officer would? <laughs> he is clearly agitated with us. Clearly. He thinks you're stupid, sire. <laughs> oh, this, is, this game is making me laugh. Man, I love this game. Hey, down in the comments below, let me know what you think so far here of Disco Elysium. I'm having a... Disco Elysium. I'm having a fantastic time playing. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic time watching. I'm kind of forgetting you guys exist because I'm just having a fantastic time. Ask him about the body's location before ask him if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones. Not vice it, versa. Well, should we listen to our rhetoric or should we... Um, should we go? No. Okay. If we're being the good cop, uh, superstar good cop. Uh, so let's go. Where exactly is Behind the body? this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. They? Ooh, who's they? How do we... That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the franco nigerian cavalry to fit through. Oh, what's the franco nigerian cavalry? This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocent franco negro sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind. Fifth century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, franco nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. Hmm, okay. First off, loving the detail so far. Like, I don't know what any of this means, but the the little, you know, they could have just been like, yep, a horse can make its way through. No, they dug into this whole 5th century, 5th style, 5th century style stuff. Um, let's go ahead and ask where'd Sylvie go. She went away because none of your business. Ooh. Have they not been telling you you're a cop? Everything is my business. Heck yeah, I'm a cop. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. Aww. I appreciate that. Unrequited love. Thank you. Uh, the number is tucked safely away. Mystery solved. Didn't go well. Um, I guess let's say mystery is solved. Because I thought you were supposed to be investigating the lynching. Not my employer conduct. <laughs> uh, this just gets on my nerves. I'm a feminist. I guess I like to be thorough. Everything has something to do with everything. I don't know. I just went for it. You're right. I probably shouldn't have asked. Uh, no, let's go if everything has something to do with everything. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? Yeah. I'd who like to get back to what I was doing. Sitting there playing with the bird? Okay, who killed him? I don't him? know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's Damn, okay. Job. Someone's coming out cranky again. This is it. He said he they. Said they. Hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they? Yeah. If he doesn't know. Rhetoric coming in strong. Oh, people are saying it was the union dock workers, that it was a lynching. Who exactly is saying the that? Locals, the locals, customers, the people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Mm. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Hmm. Why would the dock work workers lynch this I man? I suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. Okay, why do they have nothing better to do? You mean the strike? Oh, uh, okay. Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionists probably thought they'd send a message. So do we do we be a jerk and accuse him? No, let's go on to I have other the questions. Lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook. He's been scribbling in. I guess that's all three. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. Let's go. All right, let's go. Oh, so fast. You owe me 130 real. <laughs> um, well, I... Mm, okay, let's ask what oh, reals are. Excuse me. You owe me 130 real. The IIR, or Inter-Isolary Real, 
is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Uh, we'll go off number two here. Wow, you're a genius. <laughs> yes, that's right, money. You uh, owe this establishment 130 real. Uh, what do I owe this place for? Boy, exactly is my thing. <laughs> okay, well, give me an itemized list. Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Okay. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Okay, that's 100. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. <laughs> well, we're not going to arrest him, but what exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? Uh, since I woke up, I had trouble remembering even the most basic concepts of reality. Money is what grown-up people use uh, to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything. <laughs> Where do I get it from? Uh, why do I need it? Uh, show them the coins and ask if this is money. Okay, definitely. Yes, it is. Uh, count them and give them to him. That's 10, 10, 20, 40. I'm down, now I'm down to 90, right? Uh, but I only got 0.4 reals, right? I guess we'll click on this and see what happens. No, you see, that's 40 <laughs> cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have a Wait, but it took it out of my inventory. Uh, 100 times smaller, but that's horrible. Okay. The cafeteria manager stands silently, looking at the coppers on the counter before him. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have. Darkness rides? Um... No. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. Okay, so thinking out loud here, we definitely need to do a jerk playthrough after this playthrough. Or at least I'm going to play a jerk through playthrough because um, I imagine I'll be laughing my butt off the whole time being a jerk. Okay, uh, so what happens sorry, now? but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Oh, we're going to sleep outside, okay. sleep rough? Maybe you're better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Uh, let's see. Isn't there somewhere else I can stay around here? I don't have a home. I don't remember where my home is. F this place. I'll take my chances on the street. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, we'll go for to see what I can I do. couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car, okay? We have to get this investigation started now. You're right, Kim. We, we got better things to do than sit here and argue over 130 real. Good luck. Ooh, wow. He's, he's just so, so mean to me. What did I do to this guy other than break a window and drink half the bar and be a general somewhat jerk to him? All right, let's see what we got here. Where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. Uh, do I even have... Oh, I'm assuming we have a home. Let's go if I have no but idea. you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Up on Marvel Hill, far away. I don't know, near, maybe south, maybe? Let's try that. You don't really know, do you? Nope, I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? I have a vague, blackened image. Um, I, I guess we have a, a vague, black blackened image. Doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay. If you run out of money. <laughs> Obo cap. Ooh, okay, uh, I guess I could trace my way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number on a building. Yeah, we'll go with that. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. All right, that sounds fantastic. Let's take a peek here. Okay, so we're internalizing the some kind of superstar. Um... We got to try to do, find our address. Let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through the courtyards. Scaring little children's children. 
go under the great raised uh, motor motor car track uh, the eight slash eight one until you reach the uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, so it sounds like we kind of know where we're supposed to go. Um, and then do we have anywhere else we need to click on? Okay, so we can't click on any of these yet. I don't think. Let's check. Wow, we got quite a bit of things we can try to think about. I didn't realize how in depth this game was. Like we've been playing forty minutes, and I feel like we've already gotten the world history. And I, I would imagine there's a lot more. <laughs> Uh, Quest-wise, we still got to sing karaoke, report our missing badge, go to the victim's body, who made, figure out who made the call. We got to call Sylvie here, uh, and then pay for the damages of our room, the 130 we owe. Well, it seems like we didn't do a lot. Uh, we only walked downstairs and talked to two people, but we, we made heck of a dent in this game, I think. Uh, we've been going for about 25 minutes now, so we'll go ahead and call that here for now. Thank you so much for coming out and joining me here in Disco Elysium. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to Tooth & Scrubs Gaming so you get all this great Disco Elysium content on time and in orderly fashion. And I'll see you in the next video.